Hey guys, Blue Kool-Aid here. Do a video for you. Um, this one won't be very long. Um, but we do have some stuff going on here that I really want to go over with you guys real quick. Um, this is uh, Seeds. This is Lasco C2. Okay, this is uh, basically our view from Earth. This satellite sits right out in front of us. It's from uh, SOHO. It's on the SOHO Observatory. That's where this camera's at, this tool. Okay, Lasco C2, C3, that's on uh, SOHO. Okay, we typically use SOHO, SETCHI, um, Stereo A, SDO. Those are the main spacecrafts that we typically go to first when we're doing this research. And there are others out there, um, but and those are typically the ones that we do use because they're, well, they're pretty accessible for the most part. They're getting harder <laughs> for sure to be accessible. But um, we did have a, a, a small CME here, and that's what this, if you guys look at this, the, the imaging on the left, that part of the tool is specifically there to detect CMEs, okay? When it sees a CME, it'll put a red line, and then it tries to, or, or a blue line, I think, then it tries to outline it in red. Um, and they're plus marks is really what they are. But um, as you see um, over here, you're going to see it right up here. Okay, it's getting ready to happen right here. See that? Okay. Now, when we see these things, you know, the first question that comes to mind, is it Earth-facing? All right. Now, it's very hard to, to tell that just by looking at these satellites. Okay, there's other data points and stuff that people way smarter than me can go look at and say, hey, yeah, this thing... It's going to be pretty close to hitting us or we're going to catch a glancing blow and sometimes even they have to guess okay so it is a very difficult thing to see if we're going to take a direct hit from any cme unless it's very large and um, these smaller ones um, are very hard to detect um, what direction they're going sometimes um, just because they're not as big they're not as wide they don't cover as much area so um, with that being said <laughs> Just to give you some reference, again, the Earth would be down here. You're okay, not down there, but the, if you're looking from the Earth, okay? So when you look at this, it kind of looks like it's going way away from us, right? Well, it's not really necessarily the case, okay? Because we this is a two-dimensional model, all right? So <laughs> we're three dimensions. That thing could be coming at this angle, okay? Um, and you guys have seen that other little ejection over here, too. That's something else I wanted to mention. It seems as past month or so, um, as we're starting to get into the solar minimum, we're at the very, very beginning stages, okay? Um, we're not even into the, the deepest part of this minimum, okay? We should be, you know, slowing down. The sun's activity definitely is slowing down, okay? But it seems like the past three or four weeks... The sun's been, you know, pretty unstable. We haven't seen any big ejections. That's not what I'm talking about. Or sunspots. Or we've seen a decent amount of coronal holes. Not a whole bunch. But we're seeing a lot of filaments and stuff dancing around on the surface. Um, it seems like it's getting more and more volatile, I guess I could use that word. Um, <laughs> it's not really ejecting anything. Except for the, you know, cases like this where it actually does. Um, and we can see how, what it's doing here. So that was a small CME. Now, after looking, when we see that, how do we know what direction that's going? Well, it's kind of hard to tell, like I said. So we start looking at these other, other tools. We can go look at Stereo A, all right? And I, and I will, I'll take you over to Stereo A real quick because um, it only takes a second to boot up there. Now this is, and I'm just going to tell you right now, this isn't going to help us much, okay? It does help us some. Okay, what this is doing, here's that CME. See that? Okay, I know it's still kind of hard to see, but it's kind of coning off this way, right? So what that does for us is, because Stereo A sits off to our left, if you want to look at it in that those terms, okay? It's looking at the left side of the sun from our perspective, okay? So it would be looking, we, if we were to look at Stereo A, we would have to look to the left, okay but it but stereo a itself is actually looking at the sun 
So this kind of gives us a, an angle, if I can use that word there, up or down. So we can kind of tell that this thing's kind of going up, okay, um, which could be good, could be bad, depends on how big it is, right? Um, so all that, that's really all that this thing can help us with. Um, it can't really tell you if it's left or right because it because of its perspective, and that's why when we will go back to Soho, let's go C two, and that's that's where we can see left or right. So as you can tell, this did shoot up that direction. It kind of looked like that, and stereo A kind of confirmed that. But we do not know how far out to the left that is. And again, guys, I have to say this. When they shoot these particles out from the sun, okay, when the sun does that, I've explained this before, but it's, it's kind of like buckshot. Okay, it spreads out. The further out it gets, the wider it gets. Okay? Um, you know, it's not like a laser beam is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be directly pointed at us for us to catch some kind of a, a glancing blow or, or even a moderate blow from it. So that's what I'm trying to say here. Now, this is no big deal, okay? Now, this could be very well could be, you know, we could catch a, a small glance from this thing. Um, I, I, I'm waiting on more data because this is just happening as I'm doing this. Um, as the new data comes in for, the, for today on the 18th, um, we'll be able to tell a little bit more. But um, I am going to pause here for a second because I want to take you guys to SDO. Okay, guys, I got you over here at the SDO. Um, this is the 304 angstrom, okay? This is the one we typically look at when we're looking at, like, filaments um, dancing around here, trying to see if it was a true CME. Because if it's a true CME, it will, you know, some of the mass, it's coronal mass, will eject out from the sun and not get retrieved back, back to the sun from the gravity pull of the sun. If it's able, in other words, if the mass is able to escape the sun. That's pretty much what that, that computes to. Um, there's a lot more definitions we could go into, but we're not because it would be, well, it'd probably be boring for everybody. Number one, number two, um, it is, it, there's a lot there to try to understand and it does take multiple times of reading it to, for most people, even my, you know, such as myself have to read these things over and over and over to really get a true understanding of what we're seeing. Um, but as you guys can see, look at all these filaments dancing around. Now, if we were in a typical sun cycle, like not the beginnings of a solar minimum or anything like that, this would not even be much to look at, okay? Just being honest there. But seeing how we are kind of starting to get into the solar minimum, just the beginnings of it again, okay? The, this activity should continue to slow down, okay? That's, that's the whole basis of the, you know, the sun cycle itself the 11 year sun cycle that it has um, and again most people don't understand that either the sun cycle itself the 11 years it, the the sun's poles flip every 11 years <laughs> that's what the sun cycle is um, at least that's my understanding of it that's again that's a very basic uh, definition there so it doesn't have you know so it can have some pretty decent effects you know, but it wouldn't be like, I don't know, I, I don't think we can really relate that to like a magnetic pole flip here on Earth. Um, we might be able to in a loose way, but again, the sun's made up of different stuff than what the Earth actually is. So it would, in my opinion, obviously it would react way different. We would see different things because the sun doesn't have water on it and all that kind of thing. Um, so that's that's what I'm trying to say. But... Um, what I want you guys to look at here, okay, so we're, this is our view. We're looking directly at the sun. This is exactly what the satellite's seen. It's from our point of view, okay? And this, this is something that it's, this is why it's kind of hard to detect these CMEs sometimes and, and to find what direction they're going because looking at this right here, most people would be like, well, I'm not really seeing no ejections or any kind of flaring or any kind of filament or whatever. Well, it's hard to see it when you're looking dead on it. Okay, that's why the occultors are there for some of those uh, other cameras. Okay, because th this, the brightness, we're seeing some of the brightness is what I'm saying. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in. Let's see if you guys can catch it. Okay, it's going to be, it's just going to be like a shadowed area. 
it's going to move pretty fast. <coughs> there it went. Okay. It was right up in here. Okay, I'll just do that and we'll see if you guys can see it now. Right about there. See that move? Okay, let's see if I can't zoom in some more. Yeah, I can zoom in some more. Again, it's kind of in there. And it is hard to see on this 304. It really is. See that kind of move across? Wasn't much. Okay, but that if that if you take that same release right there and you move it over here from our view, it, you're going to see it way more just because the background color is black. Okay, it's, dark, it's the darkness of space behind there. We're having to look at this thing through the brightness of the star. So <laughs> that's why it's hard to see stuff on the front of this, the filaments anyway. Um, we can see them. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to take you over here to the the different angstrom here. We'll get get a different view of this. Okay. And once you guys start navigating these tools, you'll get faster at it. Okay. You'll learn little tricks. And I, and I, I try to give you guys the best explanation I can as far as how to navigate these tools. But um, everybody finds their own, own way, I guess. Okay. So this is the, the 171 angstrom. Okay, I show you guys this a lot. Now, I want you guys, did you see that? It looks as if the whole sun moves, right? Watch. Right about there. See that jump a little bit? Okay, obviously the sun didn't jump. Okay, what moved there was the actual satellite. Okay, the satellite got disturbed. Yes, that was the first thing I, I noticed when I looked at this. And that happens quite often, guys. It does. Um, energy hits it. It moves. It's just what happens. I mean, it, and, but, it, you know, it has its own navigation systems that gets it right back to where it needs to be. But <laughs> I want you guys to look here. And I'm going to slow this down some because when this gets to 17, 917 at about... Uh, 19 to 20 hundred hours I want you to watch okay because this is important about what i'm getting ready to tell you and again you're going to see it jump that's what you're going to see but i want to show it to you guys okay okay did you see that and it was a time stamp i wanted to show that to you so you guys can understand what i'm getting ready to show you now i'm going to pause for a second okay here in just just a minute though um again you know we can't really see that little small CME, you know, you've seen it move just a little bit. It's kind of, see, they become different colors on these different angstroms. But when they're when they're right there on the face of the sun like that, from our point of view, they are kind of difficult to see sometimes. And again, the bigger ones obviously are easier to see. So and those are typically the ones we need to worry about. <laughs> but that was about 20 hundred hours on the 17th when that, when that uh, satellite got moved and you seen that little jump. Now I'm going to show you guys something. Okay, guys, I got you over here at Space Weather. All right, this is NOAA Space Weather. I show you guys this a lot. This is the ACE graph, okay? Now, this is the timestamp we're looking at between the 19th, oops, let's do this. Between the 19th and the 20th, and if you draw a straight line, you'll see what's here, okay? Now, if you guys look at what's in there, <clears throat> Just kind of keep that in mind right there, that timestamp area. Okay, the phi angle, okay? And I know I need to still explain to you guys what that is. Um, it's basically the angle, and I'll give you a quick definition, of the interplanetary uh, magnetic field lines, the way that the angle is between us and the sun. Okay, that's pretty much, that's kind of a basic definition of what that is. Um, negative means... I, I think negative is more connectivity, I think. Um, and positive, I think it's kind of reverse of what you would actually think it should be. But I'll go more into that, you know, later on. But when you see these spikes on the phi angle, which is this blue chart, sometimes the, the, the pole, the, they switch polarity. Okay, those angles switch back and forth between positive and negative. All right, when they do that, it does cause some disruptions. Um, 
magnetically, obviously. <coughs> but what's significant about this is we've seen the SDO jump at that exact time. Okay, and here's the density too. It moved also. So did we catch a... My, my thing is here, I think we may have caught a, a cosmic ray actually hitting us. Um, I don't think this came from the sun because it, it was not a lasting event. It could, you know, it could be, I guess, but our solar wind speed didn't hardly even move. Okay, so when these other ones are moving and the solar wind speed isn't, um, it's hard to blame it on the sun. Um, not to mention that we'd have to backtrack it from the solar wind speed and go see if there was a coronal hole at that time, like three days ago. Um, there's a good chance it might have been. We might have been, you know, magnetically connected to it at that time that shoot that solar wind at us. There's a whole there's a whole bunch of possibilities. But what I'm trying to show you guys here is that in that timestamp area, these things reacted. So something happened. So either that pole, either the polarity reversed in the phi angle and caused that little jolt, which I don't really think, I mean, it could have reversed there, but I really think that because the density changed, okay, some, we, we got some energy from somewhere. It was just like a quick burst, because if you look at the rest of it, the rest of this graph, it seems to be pretty normal. Even the phi angle kind of even started to level out. Okay, um, that's not something we would typically be worried about, right? So, you know, when we see these things, we question what's going on and, and all that. So keep that timestamp in mind again, okay? So now we've got two different tools. This really isn't a tool. This is just data in a, in a graph. But it's showing the same timestamp of disruption at the same time as we've seen the SDO satellite kind of move. It kind of jumped around, bounced around for a minute. Okay, I'm going to pause again because I got something I really want to show you here. Okay, guys. Um, first off, I got to tell you guys that the, the typical magneto pause uh, graphs that I show you guys, um, the ones from ISWA, um, those are still down. It's been four days now. Um, I don't know what's happened. It could just be they went into safe mode and they're having some technical issues. And that, that does happen, guys. I really have to put that disclaimer out there because it does. But when they're down for extended periods of time like this, it does cause you to wonder why why they can't get it fixed faster or if they've done something on purpose to not let us see some data. I don't know. But this is the other this is the other uh, magnetopause and, and magnetic field solar wind uh, models, okay? Um, this the one the only thing I don't like about this one is you can't go back and see archived um, movies of these. Okay, so if you don't record them as you're seeing them, if it moves on to the next timestamp, you don't get to see that data again. Okay, um, I don't. My guess is that's intentional. I don't know why because I wouldn't think that it would be that much memory for that to be able just to be able to save that into a, a database and let everybody be able to access it okay our tax dollars do pay for this stuff and i know i've said that a lot lately but that is the truth okay so anyway at the same same time stamp okay let me uh the time stamp up here see that says 20 let's do that again it's up in here. See that? It says 20. Now, what you're going to see, and I'm just going to go ahead and explain it a little bit before I start this. You're not going to see any energy coming from the front at all. Okay? But you're going to see the Earth react in a very, very, uh, well, kind of violent way. You'll see our magnetic, our, uh, our shields, basically. I mean, you know, paws and stuff, it'll just... It expands out from the inside out, okay, and it, it does it in all directions. You'll see what I mean when I when I roll this uh, video, okay. Now, did we get hit from something in the front first to cause this to happen? In my mind, <clears throat> it would take a little bit more of a hit for us to react in this way. So, what I think is going on, <clears throat> and this is just my opinion, that I do believe that the Earth sometimes acts as a capacitor. Okay, what a capacitor does is 
when it, it collects energy, basically. Okay, it's almost like a big battery. But it can only hold so much. So when it, like, if you guys want to relate that to, like, machinery in our world, um, they use it a lot because it does store energy and they're able to control when it releases it. Okay, that's what that's for. Here, you know, in a practical use. So if the Earth is acting like that, we don't have control over it. That's the difference. Okay? So if we're collecting all this energy and it can't hold it anymore, and it lets it all go out, it goes out in all directions. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to call it like a an Earth ejection or what have you, because I'm not so sure that that's exactly what's going on here. But I do think that the Earth's letting go of some energy. Um, that's what it looks like to me. Now, if it... <clears throat> and I, I'm using Earth at a very loose term there, I guess. I, sh I should be talking about magnetically here, guys, okay? Um, our atmosphere and stuff. Just all the energy there, ionized part you know, charged particles, all that stuff that's there, it gets, keeps getting collected and collected, and finally it can't hold it, so it lets it go. All right? That's what I'm saying. Now, you're going to see what I... Like I said, you're going to see here in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and play this. Okay? And I run it through a couple times. See that? See how that just... It started in the, in the inside. Watch. See that? Nothing from the front, and it just exploded out. I don't know what caused that. Now, if you go over here and look at the density, remember I said the density changed on this timestamp? You can see a little bit, the particles are a little bit more dense right when that happens. So did we expand out, cause the density, cause the detector to catch that density as we expanded out? Or was it vice versa? Did we get hit with that and then that? Watch this one. This one's pretty crazy looking. Watch. Boom. Nothing from the front. Nothing at all. This tool is not showing anything from the front. And this is this is what I'm saying. Because if this did come from that, like that phi angle or what have you, um, <laughs> like if it was the reverse polarity, maybe that caused some sort of a reaction and we had to release the energy out, I don't know. Um, I'm just showing you the observation at this point. I'm still trying to figure it out for myself. Um, I don't know what's going on there, but I do know that that was very, very odd. Um, we'll go, we'll watch that one more time. Okay. Um, <clears throat> cause I do think that, you know, whether we got hit with something from the front at all first, whatever it was, if we did get hit from the front with something, it was very, very minimal. That's my point. But yet we reacted in such a, a pretty big way there, guys. Look at that. Okay. Now you do see, like I said, you do see the density change a little bit. But the white color, guys, is lower density on this graph. Okay, that's my point. The, if we'd have seen darker waves coming at us, that would have been higher density particles. But they weren't. They were lower density. Did that Was that what, what it took to let our energy go ahead and just release was for the density to come down a little bit i don't know all i can tell you is i've never seen it do this now there's probably a really good explanation for it <laughs> i just don't know what it is um, which is why i'm showing it to you because it's interesting and it it definitely gives us something to think about because of all the stuff i just got through talking about um so yeah so we had a CME, guys, a small one. Is it coming our way? I'm not sure yet. Um, it wasn't on the backside, I can tell you that. Um, it, it may miss us because of the angle it's traveling, and it was very, very small. So if we do see any uptick from it geomagnetically, it's going to be small, I would think. Um, it's not a big deal, but I did want to show it to you. But this here did kind of strike me funny, okay? And again, that one magnetos magnetosphere tool is down been down for four days now um <laughs> you always got to wonder now the australian model <clears throat> is showing the same disruption so i know that it's not a tool malfunction okay because we're seeing it on multiple satellites so take that for what it's worth but i, I did i did put a uh, an updated video here for you guys or all the models and stuff um I'll put that on the end of this video here so you guys can see that again. Um, and I'll come back with another video here shortly. Um, you know, if there's any more action going on, those kinds of things. 
earthquakes guys they're not stopping um it's almost getting to the point now where man it's almost like we don't even have to talk about it because i mean I, i'm going to keep talking about it but it seems like it would be in our conversation every day because that stuff is just not slowing down um and i don't look for it to slow down anytime soon plus the weather guys i mean Pay attention down south, guys. I, I feel sorry for those guys going to get the flooding and stuff from this new tropical storm. That, you know, it's hitting land and stuff. It's going to be there for a couple days. A few days cause, a, cause quite a bit of flooding from what I'm hearing and seeing. Um, and all that kind of thing. So, But, guys, uh, yeah. I just wanted to show you guys that. And uh, God bless. Yeshua saves. And uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.